Members here, and now is the time to make certain your family's holiday plans are set. And for many, that includes making plans for the pets, too. We don't want any Kevin McAllister's left home alone now, <laughs> do we? Dr. Megan Callahan is with the uh, Veterinary Emergency Group. She joins us this morning with some uh, holiday travel tips. Hey, Doc, good morning. Hi, Russell. It's good to have you with us again. All right, let's start with um, preparing a trip with the dog or cat. Um, you've got you've got some points you say we need to be careful with, right? Absolutely. First and foremost, using an appropriate carrier, especially if we're traveling in a car. If your car is not big enough for a carrier, we want to make sure we at least have a seatbelt or some type of securing fastener so your dog or cat cannot be a projectile in the event of an accident. Um, your crate should be big enough so they can get up and turn around, but not too big where they'll jostle around inside of it. It can also provide some security. If you bring your pet's bed or a pillow or a blanket, it'll feel like home even if they're not in the house. Um, and then giving them their own space, they need a place to be secure and safe. And that will also provide that security whenever you get to your destination. You've got another one on here I want to ask you about because it seems like something you would, I would forget but I, it sounds like a great idea. You say take some practice trips because if they're not used to the car, Absolutely. Taking practice trips can help for many reasons. Stress, anxiety, first and foremost. But second of all, a lot of dogs and cats get car sick and we don't know about that oh, until we take longer point. trips. So taking, taking longer trips can really give us some insight um, onto do we need to uh, condition them a little bit more, take more trips, or do we need medications to help with those longer trips? Yeah. Um, let's talk about if, if you decide you want to have them boarded, um, which, <laughs> believe me, is tough. If you want to have them boarded, uh, you got, you know, do your homework, find the right person, find the right place. But uh, and then getting them there, that can be traumatic. Get, bringing them back home, that can be traumatic too, right? Right, and being there, um, you know, it's out of their routine. It's not something they're used to. There's a lot of other noises, a lot of other smells, so it can be really stressful. Bringing them back home, they they might be out of their routine, um, exhausted or anxious. So you just have to give them a little bit of time to get reacquainted to the, the environment of your home and their routine. They may or may not have some anxiety, some exhaustion, or even make accidents in the house because their routine's been thrown off. Yeah, you know, I spoke with someone recently. Um, we're planning to travel for the holidays and uh, we didn't know exactly what to do with our two at the time. And she was great. She says, I want to come over and meet them first. I want to have a meeting with them. And then I want them to come over and have a play day for just the day to make certain everybody gets along, which I thought was a great idea. I mean, this was a, you know, you really, if you do your homework, you can find the right person to take care of them, you know? Right, and, and that's actually a, a, another big tip, is finding somebody that can stay in your home. Ah. That's the, the optimal choice so that your pet doesn't have to change routine or environments. But overall, just being patient. Holiday travel is stressful for everyone, including your pets, and um, just making sure that we're being patient with ourselves and with them during the, the changing times. Dr. Callahan, thank you. It's always good to talk to you, and that was great advice this morning. Great to be here. Thank you. See you again soon. Take care.